Kia ora, tēnā koutou everybody, welcome. Uh, welcome to Neurolight's uh, ninth series of our um, webinars. Um, this one is on Neurolight and how we align with uh, New Zealand architects to clear. Obviously it fills the category of sustainability, which we're all um, very, very passionate about. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name's Shane Clark, I'm the General Manager here at Neurolight and I have the pleasure of hosting this uh, webinar today. I'm lucky enough to have a couple of people with me on the panel. I have Duncan Sinclair, Registered Architect, Director of Black Pine Architects and one of the original uh, initiators, if you like, of New Zealand Architect Declare. I'm also very privileged to have my Managing Director, John Simmons, my boss, um, to talk about Yay. Neurolight and our, um, and our our own sustainable uh, journey. Um, so uh, just so you know, we want to try and make these uh, webinars as um, interactive as possible so you don't have to look at my face talking for half an hour. Uh, we do keep these very, very tight to, to 30 minutes. We appreciate that your time is very, very important to you. Um, we run a couple of polls. I'm gonna run the first one now. And it's, um, do you make product decisions based on environmental considerations? And uh, we're gonna share these um, answers with you uh, as a percentage. So it's um, completely anonymous. Uh, so feel free to um, get onto the keyboard there and use that chat function, all the Q and A's. Um, so we'll run through the panel and um, then towards the end there, we'll have a, a, a brief um, session on Q and A. Um, if we don't have time to cover all the questions, we'll um, send them all out in a, in a written document along with a recording of this um, incredible webinar we're about to present to you. Excellent, there you go, you see the results of the poll there. Interesting to see, excellent. All right, um, enough of me. I'm going to hand you over to John Simmons now, who's going to give us a, a bit of a, a brief, um, I guess, overview of, of Neurolight and where we are from a sustainability point of view. And um, yeah, well, I'll leave it to you, John. Sure, um, thanks, uh, Shane. Um, I guess one of the questions to ask um, is, why is a membrane company talking about sustainability? You know, we're just selling torch on membranes. Um, but to me, it's actually important that everyone is talking about sustainability and everyone figuring out what part they play in building New Zealand better and uh, reducing our client foot, uh, our carbon footprint and also just the whole environmental impact of what you do every day. Um, we really started focusing on this as a key strategic initiative about 18 months ago and um, decided that, yeah, we really had to step up and, and look at it, what we're doing and what how what we do um, impacts others. And we've been on that journey for, as I say, for about 18 months now. Um, about six months ago, or Duncan will be able to tell us exactly when, we saw the Architect Declare um, initiative and we were really excited about that because obviously we we're part of the same construction ecosystem and um, for us to see uh, architects embracing that and take ownership of making change was something that we were really supportive of so that's why one of the reasons why we've organized this presentation today is to invite our specifier community along to listen to Duncan here where uh, this architect clear journey started where it's heading and also figuring out as a supplier what we can do to assist um, so we're obviously doing our thing but by cooperating and making sure we're all kind of rowing in the same direction is how we're going to make the biggest impact um, yeah that's about yeah. it for me i'll get into a little bit more about our carbon journey later on in the presentation but that just gives you some context about why uh, neurolite's hosting this uh, webinar on architects to clear yeah, no, it does raise a, an interesting question how a, a, you know, a, a membrane supply company gets involved. Have you got any um, examples of a physical change, just to give someone an, uh, give the, the, the viewers an example of, of what we've done? Just a quick one? Or? Well, I mean, we're doing, a, we're doing a few things, and they all actually, even when we just started talking about it, that created a good vibe within the, in the company. Hmm. Um, across the board from basically whatever role people are in they're excited to know that they're coming to work and that what they're doing is helping to change things for the better um, so although it can be a bit nerve-wracking starting it once you do start it um, it's actually 
quite fun to jump in and start doing things. And even to the point where, uh, and Shane, you haven't actually talked about what our charity is today, so you're going to oh, right. chuck in. But the fact that each time we do one of these webinars, we're giving some money to charity. Um, we got a note the other day from a group saying that they've planted 100 trees as a result of one of the presentations. And the, the vibe that came back from the employees is spontaneous. You're going, that's great. You know, multiple thumbs up. Yeah. So that kind of getting involved as a social cause and looking outward and going, well, how else can we help others? Um, yeah. Yeah, it just pays multiple dividends. Yeah, no, you do raise a good point about the charities, John. Um, for those of you who haven't seen um, all our webinars, obviously, um, normally when we go and see a group of architects, we'll take a plate of sausage rolls, you know. Um, obviously, we, we're sort of moving away from that with, um, you know, the invention of COVID-19. So what we do instead, as John mentioned, is we're starting to, to donate $10 per attendee to every charity that... Um, that we sponsor on the day. And today's charity is um, the Bird Rescue in Whanganui. Um, they began in 1988 um, as, a, as, a, as a sort of a, a volunteer group. And um, when they first started, they received about 30 birds and they specialize in, um, in native New Zealand birds from around Whanganui, New Plymouth area, and, um, and falcons and hawks of, um, specifically. Um, so when they first started, they had 30 birds. Um, uh, nowadays, they're receiving over a thousand a year, um, which they're caring for, injured, and, and whatnot. So um, great to know that all the attendees here today have made the world a better place. Um, that's <laughs> that's for our charity for this one here. All right, um, I'm going just, to just, uh, just Sorry, another John. thing, Shane. I've I've noticed on uh, LinkedIn, Petal Thorpe uh, giving food packages out post COVID with. Right. Um, uh, I don't know, there was something, an event that was cancelled. And so instead of kind of just throwing that food away, they're actually using it and turning it into a social good. And so there's, there's lots of opportunities if we just change our thinking. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Everyone's showing that social responsibility, no matter where you are in the sector. Um, you know, I don't think it really matters. I think it's great to see. All right, um, we'll now have the pleasure of introducing um, Duncan Sinclair, like I said earlier, he's the um, Director of Black Pine Architects and one of the instigators of New Zealand um, Architects Declare. Um, he's going to talk to us about, um, I guess, why, why he, he felt so um, uh, empowered and, and motivated to, to look at um, architect clear and he's going to tell us what it is um, which is probably really important as well all right uh, over to you Duncan thanks for that Shane <clears throat> um, yeah what I thought I'd do is, is tell you a bit about why why we got involved and why we brought it to New Zealand uh, a little about what it is and what it's not and then just cover four or five things that we've done at Black Pine over the last 12 months changes that we've made that uh, on, a, on a small scale but it all helps so I first came across Architects Declare uh, in April last year, April, May last year, and read about it in the UK. And I was just, I was really, really inspired that these were uh, leading architects from, from Europe that were putting their hand up and saying, yep, we acknowledge that there's a climate emergency and that there's a biodiversity loss emergency and we're actually going to do something about it. But we're going to put our company name up there and um, put our name on the line, essentially, and say, yeah, we're, we're going to do something about it. We're not just going to sit back and mumble about it in the corner over our coffee. We'll, we'll get out there. <laughs> and it, yeah, I was just really inspired. Um, so I tried to sign up from here and uh, they said, oh, no, you can't do that because you're not from the UK, which I was a bit gutted about. Uh, and then they said, oh, actually, you know, there's, there's another architect from New Zealand as well that's contacted us. And that was um, Sean Taylor from Team Green Architects in Queenstown. And they said, you want us to put you in contact with each other? And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. Um, so we did that and then Sean and I ended up uh, sort of bringing Architects Declare to New Zealand and uh, we, we thought it was a worthwhile thing. So in the, from a global perspective, we were, uh, I think, the third country in the world to, to start this. There's over 22 countries now that have got their own Architects Declare or versions of it. Wow. Um, so it's, it's really caught on. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of inspired architects out there and, and construction, um, uh, construction related uh, folk that are you know keen to do a bit within the area that we're doing um so so what it is and is it's an open letter essentially it's an open letter on the internet where you can sign up and say okay our practice we we acknowledge that and we want to do something about it so it's, we really didn't want it to be a group 
or, or another institution or uh, something that you have to pay a membership to or anything like that. We're not going to follow you around and, and make sure that you do what you said you're going to do. It's up there for public scrutiny. So, mm. uh, you know, if you put your name to it, then it's up to you to, to take it on. The, the 11 key items on there, some of them are quite challenging. And uh, to be fair, they, they're, I find them a bit daunting myself. And, uh, you know, they, it takes a little bit to sort of work through them. <laughs> when, when, we, when we were trying to decide though, which, whether we should just adopt it wholesale from the UK or not, uh, there's always a bit of debate about, about whether it applies overseas or whether it applies here. Uh, and when I looked around the New Zealand architectural community and, and I realised that each one of those 11 items was being done by some practice somewhere in New Zealand. And it, it was like, well, if they can be doing it, then you know, we, could all be, we could all be doing those things. So we did change it a little bit, but, but predominantly it's the same, same thing. Um, sorry, Shane. Yep. No, 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 that, that's yep. great. It's uh, being yeah. slightly, slightly adapted to, um, you know, slot within the New Zealand um, pocket. It's great. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, as I say, it can, it can be pretty daunting. Black Pine Architects is a really small practice here in Wanganui, uh, so we don't have a whole lot of resources. So when I looked at the list of things, uh, it was, yeah, it was like, oh, crikey, where do we start? And one of the best, first things really was about communication and sharing that. So we've started to do that through our newsletters, and uh, which we, we're doing anyway, um, through our website. So little things, really. But it, I guess the, the, the five things, probably the most important ones for us, have been firstly to bring architects, architects to Clare to New Zealand and get it started. Um, Team Green Architects, which is a, a smaller practice in Queenstown as well. You know, between the two of us, it's basically been Sean and myself uh, driving it so far. Uh, although we've had some really, really good support from others that have been in this field for a long time and key advice. So that was the first thing, bringing it to New Zealand. The second thing we've done at Black Pine is measuring our carbon. Um, that's been a bit, a bit daunting. We, we haven't quite made it as far as near like getting carbon zero, uh, which is a really impressive thing to do. I know there's a couple of architecture firms out there that have done that also, which is awesome. But for the scale of our project, of, of our company rather, we've used a sustainable business network template. And essentially we just record that each month um, and, and make sure that at the end of 12 months that we're coming in close to zero as we can. So that's, that's the way that we've been dealing with it. Yeah, I think that's a really great first step to actually start actually, um, you know, we're not just signing up for something, you're actually measuring, you know, uh, it's always, yeah. it's a great place to start. Yeah, it really is. It, it totally helps you focus on, on those, those things. If you don't measure it, it's like something you just sort of talk about. It's, you know, oh yeah, I hear they're doing something about it. But when you measure it, you know, and then it's hard to ignore. Yeah. So that's, but it came about actually as a suggestion from uh, Architects Declare in Australia. And they put it out as a challenge. They said, you know, to, to the signees, rather than try and focus on your projects, why don't you just, first of all, just look at your own practice. Um, yeah, no, and, and, does, over, yeah. and over 12 months, try and become carbon neutral yourselves. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, if we can't do it ourselves, then we probably shouldn't be telling others to do it. So, yeah, no, definitely, like definitely sounds like a, a, a challenge, doesn't it? A, a challenge to everybody. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> um, the third thing we do is uh, we're obviously, or similar to, to everyone else, I guess we have uh, reps from different companies phoning us up and coming to see us and showing their products. And the first question we try and ask them is, do they have a declare label for their products? Uh, and it's great to see that Neuroline have got on board with that as well. It, it just makes it a lot easier for us to know that the products that we're specifying are, are um, are better for the planet than others. So it saves us a lot of legwork and um, it's a really simple question to ask. And the fourth thing, we have uh, swapped our electricity supplier to a, a carbon zero electricity supplier. Um, so even though we are using energy from another company, we know that it's coming through uh, as sustainably as we can. And the fifth thing, which is probably, probably the largest thing for us actually has been introducing regenerative thinking into both our designs and our business practice. And uh, that's been, so what we've done in that regard is taken a few courses with uh, Regenesis. They've been run here in New Zealand. They are quite challenging from a, from a how you think about your practice, how you think about um, your projects 
and and really looking further at at the impact we have on the planet that we live on so that's that's probably been the most significant thing um wow yeah so, but I'd, I'd highly recommend the course and uh, and and thinking about that as a broader broader thing so those, those are five easy things that that we've managed to do as a small practice uh, with fairly limited resources so um and you know why we brought architects to new zealand and and what it is Ah, excellent. I think that's a, a really good example. Um, so just on the um, NZ Architects Declare, how, how many signatories does, do you guys currently have? Uh, at the moment, we're about 102 different practices in New Zealand. So when you look down the list, there's uh, you know some of New Zealand's biggest practices in there and, and certainly um, a good number of those that are most, most concerned about sustainability. But there's also a lot of single person practices. Uh, so it, you know, it works for everyone. One of the things we were really fortunate to have at the beginning was every single one of the gold medal winners, the NZIA gold medal winners that's still alive has signed up to it, which was just oh, great. Extra extraordinary. Yeah, they were yeah. really keen. So we, we really appreciate their support too. Oh, no, that's, um, that's a great result. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. Um, right now I'm going to um, throw back to John, who's going to give us a, a bit of a rundown on how Neurolites responded to um, the principles behind um, New Zealand Architects Declare and talk to uh, talk to you all about our carbon zero journey and, um, and, a, and a few examples. So over to you, John. Sure. Um, for those who are, are really interested, we've got the full webinar. So this is just a, a subset of the full webinar, but we'll, we'll take you quickly through the journey. Um, so as I say, about 18 months ago, we decided that we had to start we literally had to start doing something, you know, um, just sitting around asking my daughter to go on the student strikes wasn't, wasn't kind of cutting it, you know? And so um, we had to start figuring out what do you do? And um, just like what Duncan said was the first thing you have to kind of figure out where, what is your carbon emissions yourself? Uh, because you don't have any uh, authority to talk about it until you've started doing something yourself. So, uh, again, I'm just reinforcing what Duncan said, but it's hard to talk to your clients and encourage them to build better if you're not behaving better. And yeah. so we are exactly the same um, for us. We had to start and look what we're doing. So the first step was slashing our fossil fuel purchases and that's our direct fossil fuel purchases. So that's primarily uh, fuel and gas. And so we've had to go and swap out our cars um, to electric vehicles. And we've swapped out our, our forklifts to electric forklifts. And so that we've really, and so that's relatively simple to measure. You just look at your statement and see how much you, you're spending at BP or, or Shell and go, right, we've got to get stop doing that, you know? <laughs> um, and then you've got to look down your, uh, uh, up, up and down your supply chain. And that, that's actually a tougher one uh, because you're, you're trying to figure out, um, so for us, uh, a large part of our carbon footprint is the shipping, uh, which we can't avoid. Uh, but road freight, we can do stuff about. So we looked at our road freight um, into uh, within the country and we decided we to upscale our warehouse in Christchurch and ship directly into Christchurch because the fuel on a container ship is a lot less than the fuel on a truck to drive it from Auckland to Christchurch. So although you've, it's quite daunting at the start, if you actually put your mind to it, you can make changes. Uh, another one which was significant, um, in fact, it's, it's reduced our carbon footprint by more than the cars, is by increasing our stock holding so that we don't use air freight. And so we've literally tried to eliminate using any air freight um, at all. And so we're shipping more stuff in and holding it here. And that is the equivalent of our whole car fleet, you know. Uh, air freight is an incredible, uh, well, just air travel is an incredible um, contribution. So um, really thinking about do we need to make that journey? We can't actually make any overseas journeys now. So COVID's uh, been a wonderful thing in that respect because it's taken away all temptation. But, um, <laughs> but the reality is actually been much more uh, calculated about the trips you do and, and, and do you need to do them, um, even within country. Um, doing these webinars uh, enable us to talk to the architectural community without actually having to drive around the country doing big roadshows and uh, standing on stands. So again, 
our, our footprint in a number of cases has been reduced just because of uh, over the last six months. Um, but that's coming through from um, looking at our supply chain. The next one, each step of these actually makes means you can make a bigger impact. Uh, ironically, because uh, the, the impact from the fuel purchase is relatively minor than the impact we can make by encouraging our um, clients to build better. Yep. Because the buildings that we build today are going to last for 100 years. And so anything we can do to make them more energy efficient is going to have a, a magnified impact. And so yep. for us, as I say, you, you step along each stepping stone, you're making a bigger impact. And that was actually one of the um, let me say enlightening moments of this journey was actually you can be a bit disheartened and go, well, I can't make that much difference. You know, a single electric car is not really making an impact, but it's actually the ripples that you can make. And yes. so, you know, like uh, Duncan's uh, architect in Wanganui, but he's actually managed to make a change for a lot of practices just from his actions. And so it is really about, and that's actually the fourth stepping stone is actually talking about it and encouraging others to change, being transparent about what you're doing, showing the journey that you're doing so that others can go, well, actually, it's not so not so daunting. I shouldn't just sit here and do nothing. I should start doing stuff, you know? So that's I, what we're trying to encourage. I, I think it really, um, the, the easiest first step there, John, is just to measure what you're already doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, it can just be a bit overwhelming, really. Uh, yeah. But just working out what you do now, that's a great start. Yep, absolutely agree. Um, so oh, what's, our, what's our next slide there? So there we go. There's our um, nice electric cars. I actually love my uh, car. I love it better than the car. I drove Subaru Legacy wagons for 15 years, and uh, I'm now in a Nissan Leaf, and boy, they go really well around well town. So I've got, I've got it's, to me, it's not a... A backward step and it's not like I'm having to make um, a huge sacrifice so uh, yeah I, I, I actually don't understand why everyone's not driving them now uh, there's the uh, brilliant so so there you are if anyone wants a test drive you can come around to New Relight and uh, we'll take you for a hoon <laughs> one, one, five minutes on the southern motorway and you'll be wanting to buy one I can assure you Shane, Shane's a big advocate as well aren't you mate yeah no absolutely um, um, I, I got told I had a new car one Sunday to come and pick it up. Uh, knew nothing about them. Um, we'd done a little bit of research into e-cars and stuff before we um, looked at purchasing them. And um, yeah, no, the, the, it's a really interesting, um, I guess, change. Because uh, I'm sure people that haven't driven them have this um, perception of them. And um, you know, uh, it's quite funny looking at the different uh, groups of people have different perceptions of the of the electric vehicles and then they drive them and it's yeah it's a, it is a it is a real mind mind changer it really is yeah and, and i mean ultimately when you look at new zealand's carbon footprint uh private transport is a huge impact or, or yeah. you know uh single person transport is a huge thing and mm. and we're we're supposed to be in an emergency we were going to have to act dramatically and make changes dramatically and so mm. something like this electric vehicle is something that that literally every one of us can do um, pretty, pretty seamlessly. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, speaking for myself, you know, as a, an employee of Neurolite and um, seeing these, these steps unfold and becoming part of this carbon zero journey and, you know, start off by measuring what we did. And then we've actually, we've actually made some physical changes. I mean, the car is just one example. Um, but you, as a, as an employee, you do feel quite proud and quite, I guess, uh, maybe a little smug that you, you are, you know, you are doing the right thing. And um, John, have you seen that sort of reflect through other members of the of the staff here? And how have we sort of run them through? Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. I, I mean, I honestly believe that that people do get in and, and embrace it, and they can see what you're doing and see that it's been done for the right reasons. And uh, and so then you're actually getting the staff coming through and proposing changes. Mm. Our big, next big step is within, with regard to construction waste and how do we actually cut that down and make good use of the of the construction materials. Anyway, I, I actually yep. do rave on when I get on this subject <laughs> and I see that I've actually gone over time. So on my last slide, I'm gonna spend about 30 seconds and um, I apologize for that. Um, what we have done, and we actually have this on our website as well, is, is we took the carbon uh, architect to clear principles and try to align what we're doing with it 
And um, the reason for that is to, so A, to kind of support what's happening with architecture to clear, but also to help architects who have signed up to look at what we're doing and figure mm. out whether that's reinforcing what they're trying to achieve. And to be honest, if it'd be great if other suppliers or all suppliers did the same thing so that as an architect, it was quite relatively, um, it gave you some direction, should we say. Yeah. Um, the short answer is, um, for us anyway, because I've only got about 30 seconds, um, is uh, uh, warm roofs actually solve a lot of the problems. Mm. So for example, you can put a warm roof on an existing property and upgrade that property so it's thermally insulated. You're not allowing airflow out of your building. So that uh, aligns with passive house principles as well, so that you're actually trying to build a full encapsulation system. You can obviously put solar panels on your uh, on your warm roof and you can put a green roof on your warm roof. So you've got regenerative uh, principles coming in there as well. Uh, but the main thing is that fully encapsulating your building envelope with a thermal wrap. Uh, that's a big change in New Zealand. Culturally, we've kind of just told people to put an extra jersey on. And then, um, you know, we've, we've tried to waterproof our buildings, but we haven't really got down to the nitty gritty about air and about thermal and, and you look overseas and America and Europe and they're, they're literally a decade or more ahead of mm. our thinking. So for us, uh, when we're looking at these principles, we're saying a warm roof is actually the solution for the multiple of the challenges there. Yeah, yeah it, it ticks lots of boxes, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, we are lucky enough. We've got about four minutes left for our, our Q and A. Um, so, I've got a few questions here, which is great. So feel free to jump on the, the keyboard and, and send your questions in. Um, so I've got one here for Duncan. Um, how do you join Architects Declare? Uh, it's pretty simple. You go to the, uh, the Architects Declare website, New Zealand. I think there's a link in the chat there. Uh, fill out the form at the bottom and send, and then we'll send you an email just to confirm that it's okay with the principle of the practice. And okay. uh, and you're on. It's, it's pretty painless. Yep, no, that sounds pretty pretty easy. Okay. Um, now, okay, there's a there's a link just popped up on the chat function there, folks. If you can see that there, I'm just going to run our second poll here um, while we're all um, still here. Is um, so the question is, do you have difficulty understanding any of the New Zealand architects' principles? Um, we would like to know if if you do. Um, again, it's anonymous. Um, and that, that will sort of help, I guess, shape it. And um, we'll also give the opportunity to, to reach out for a follow-up where we can, uh, or, or Duncan can assist with any of the issues there. So feel free to, to drop in your uh, answers there. Um, right, I've got a question here. This one might be for you, John. Um, can you just, like someone said, can you just uh, define what you mean by wrapping the building? What does, what do you? You mean by wrapping? Oh, okay. So that's talking about um, fully encapsulating the building. Um, the, the simplest way should be, uh, is, you should be able to put a red pen on your plan at the thermal layer and go continuously without lifting it from one side to the other. In fact, go all the way around. Um, we get a lot of plans in the office. I've never actually seen it achieved. So, mm -hmm. um, but... Um, for me, I spend a lot of evenings on YouTube watching Matt Rissinger uh, talking away, and um, he actually builds monopoly buildings. He calls them monopoly houses, so he actually fully wraps them, and then he will actually put the suffetes out and turn them into a normal house. And so it is, it is perfectly possible to achieve fully wrapped building that's got zero airflow through the structure. Condensation is accounted for, uh, water flow, is kept out of the building and kept well away from the structure and you've got a continuous insulation no no thermal bridging and so yeah it's not it's not the stuff of science fiction or fantasy it's it is achievable and buildable and it aligns with passive house type principles really Excellent. Um, i mean one, one thing on that i mean mm. uh, passive house is great and i i don't know if duncan designs along those but yes. but, but but to me it's actually a it's a continuum and to get to pass out would be great, but it's the principles and moving people along towards that um, is, is, is really critical and understanding the rationale. So for us, 
and a cold roof where like we used to do last century is how I like to describe it. Um, you're actually putting holes in the structure and allowing air to pass. Mm -hmm. So, so for the next hundred years in that building, you're going to heat it and allow all that hot air to escape. It makes no sense. It really makes no sense. No. Makes I, I think, I think John, the, the, the ideas of the passive house are fantastic for the same reasons that architects declare is, and that's that, um, just starting to measure what you're, what you're build, designing now is the best first step. You know, it is a long continuum to get to passive house standard because it's a pretty high standard. Mm. Um, but it does provide you with an awesome environment when you're finished. Um, but yes. as soon as you, as soon as you start to measure what you're doing now, then you just, you realize what can be done. Yeah. Um, yeah. On that note, we did um, a Bodo uh, webinar about two months ago, which is a building where it's fully encapsulated. Mm. And, and that had a sustainability report attached to it. Um, we can send it to anyone who wants to see it. And that actually talked about, it looked at what, the building code level, the level that it was built at, which was very high to what mm. we've done in the past, and then a high energy building and a passive building. So you actually got the three levels of insulation plus how that would impact the energy use of the building, uh, which from a client perspective, it's actually a really interesting discussion because you're talking about facts and not just gut feel mm. anymore. Yes. You know? So yeah. um, I totally agree with you, Duncan, around the idea of measuring and getting a, a sustainable, a, a, uh, sorry, energy report. Yeah, commissioned. Yeah. Yep. No, it's um. Oh. Right, we are getting towards the end of our time. Um, I've got a question here about my shirt. So it looks like we've reached the bottom of the barrel as far as <laughs> questions go. <laughs> um, we'll leave that there. Um, look, I'd like to thank the the panelists for their time today, uh, particularly Duncan. It was great. Um, thank you, sir. We just got the third poll to run, which is a, a nice and simple one. Just uh, would you like a follow up on any of the comments and stuff today? Um, we can reach out to you um, privately after this and um, either, you know, uh, on the New Zealand um, Architects Declare topic or anything that Neurolite's brought up, um, we, can, we can reach out to you after this. Um, so yeah, no, great. Thanks um, for your time today. Um, thanks for the panelists. Um, thanks for your contribution towards that um, wonderful charity. Um, so we've got some up and coming webinars. The next one we're going to be talking to is uh, with Jane, sorry, with um, Gerard Roofing and Thermacore Warm Roof. So this is how we basically um, promote the principle of a warm roof into a, a skillion or a, a pitched roof. Uh, so we'll be talking about that uh, with Gerard. Um, the next webinar after that will be um, waterproofing myth busting. Uh, probably won't be quite as um, dramatic as the TV show. I don't think there'll be any explosions, um, but we will be um, debunking um, five of our um, favorite myths we get um, challenged on. Um, the, the next one after that, we'll be talking about below ground waterproofing and what our approach is, which we believe is best practice um, for below ground waterproofing. Um, and I think that is it for us. I appreciate your time. We are one and a half minutes over time, so I do appreciate that. And um, stay tuned and we'll see you on the next webinar. Thanks very much. See ya. <laughs>